Okay, so we bought a Zoe and I posted my first impressions on owning a Zoe on social media and on YouTube. And I got a lot of similar questions from people that I thought today we could go over and we could talk about living with an EV. <laughs> the first question I got from a lot of people was, it takes 88,000 miles to make an EV uh, carbon neutral. Um, oh, it's a very clever, I wonder where they got that from. It's a really clever argument because the truth is that's actually true. But also the truth is that's missing the point. All cars, if you have to own a personal vehicle and maybe, you know, using public transport is the answer, but if you do own a personal vehicle, an ICE, an internal combustion engine car, any vehicle, including an electric vehicle, uses fuel power to stamp the metal, to make the rubber, you know, to spray the paint. All of us are not carbon neutral if we own a car. The 88,000 mile figure, I have no idea if that's true or false, but the point is, as soon as the EV is produced, using roughly the same energy as on any car, you stopped burning stuff. So you're actually then becoming carbon neutral. And here's a question I think originated with Top Gear. EVs take three weeks to charge. Well, yeah, sure. I think they had a, a Tesla with a 92 kilowatt battery and they plugged it into a three pin plug. Yeah, it'll take forever. This is a Zoe with a 52 kilowatt battery. And on DC rapid charging, this can take like 45 minutes to charge. On uh, AC, it can take a couple of hours. And on a three pin plug, overnight. All doable for an average homeowner. And here's another one. EVs are terribly expensive to charge. Think of the electricity cost. Oh, hang on. Think of the fuel cost. We used to put 50 or 60 euros in our diesel van just to fill up the tank. And to fill this EV, this Renault Zoe, is going to be about four or five euros. So we're going to save a fortune on fuel costs. This is me just being mercenary, never mind for the environment. Electricity is cheaper than stuff that you burn. There's no EV charge points. Yeah, there aren't enough, I would agree. And I think a lot of the EV charge points were put in by people who can't, dare I say, jumping on an EV bandwagon. And I think they use apps, they use RFID cards, they, you have to join a club, the prices are all over the place, a lot are broken. I can't wait for the day that the big fossil fuel companies, the petrol stations, you drive up to a motorway service station, there's 30 or 40 electric charge points, they're low cost, you just plug your car in and put your credit card in and they just work. That will be a happy day. And we're not there yet. It's absolutely true. All these clubs and apps and EV charges that don't work, that has to change as more EVs hit the market. But Simon, how long will your battery last in this car? You'll have to change it. Uh, well, that, this is a bit of a myth. <laughs> But yeah, you know, lithium ion batteries, the only ones that I've ever used before were in a phone or a laptop and they used to break. You know, long before the life of the product, you'd need a new battery and some of them weren't even replaceable. So I thought, wow, that's gonna be a big problem about the battery in the car. We, you know, a couple of years, it's gonna need a new battery and they're an expensive part of the car. But no, that's not true. <laughs> the battery management system BMS in a car is way more sophisticated than in your iPhone. In fact, Apple kind of, I believe, wants your, your battery to fail, so you buy a new phone. Renault don't want your battery to fail, <laughs> and they get, give you an eight-year warranty with it, which is just really amazing. 
The classic story is Nissan, when they brought out the Nissan Leaf, thought that they'd be changing all the Nissan Leaf batteries regularly. So they set up a secondary business to take the Nissan Leaf car batteries back and put them into household uh, batteries. House batteries are less stressed than a car. They can draw power more gently. And so the older, maybe batteries that only had 75% charge life left in them, they would recycle them into home charge, Nissan home chargers. It never worked. Nobody handed their Nissan Leaf batteries in. They all worked. The battery management system in cars is completely different. And they, and it, I mean, for example, in here in the Zoe, the Re Renault doesn't let the battery go completely empty and it doesn't actually let it become fully charged. So you're working in the middle range. It's also got fans or in some cars they've got uh, liquid cooling uh, to actually keep the battery at optimum temperature and charge amount. And uh, I, from a, a tip that I've got from uh, other EV uh, owners is don't keep on charging your battery up um, to 100% every couple of nights. Uh, only charge your battery um, when it's down to about 10% and don't charge it more than 80. So work in that 10% to 80% range and that will really help the longevity of the battery. But EVs are slow and they can't tow. Um, they're certainly not slow. This is pokey and Anybody who's driven a Tesla will know how fast they are. The acceleration is just immediately there. There's no speed buildup. It's just like woomph. Amazing fact, this Renault, I think this is a bit of a problem actually, but you just have to remember it, goes exactly the same speed in reverse as it does forward. So be careful when you are reversing in an electric car because there's no real kind of restriction to the speed that it goes. And here's another one I got, was EVs are going to destroy garages and mechanics are all going to be out of business. In some ways that's true, but I think they're changing. I notice now when you go into a car dealership, they're much more interested in the finance deal than they are actually in selling you a car for cash. And if you look at the service bays, you know, they're doing everything electronically. There's no kind of changing valves and tuning carburetors. They don't do that anymore. They plug the car into a computer and update the software. And that's what will be hap going to happen with EVs. They will, as they age, still need tires and suspension and brakes and other body parts. But what they won't need are engine parts and oil changes and clutches that kind of thing is don't open a clutch <laughs> dealership don't, but you still will be changing um, wheel bearings and and brakes and things but they're going to have a lot less to go wrong with an EV a, a lot of people have pointed out Simon you're going to lose so much money with the value of the Zoe I went it's possibly true uh, at present electric vehicles because you know, a five-year-old electric vehicle is pretty old now as the technology and the battery size and the motor size and the, the software has, has improved. Uh, yeah, so we held out. We really wanted an electric vehicle as soon as they came out, but we've held out until 2021 because this Zoe does the magic mission for us. It's the 400 kilometer mission and it charges fast and it holds the amount of luggage that we need. So this car is fine. In five years time, there will be a thousand kilometer range car that charges in 10 seconds. I know it, but if we keep this car, which we intend to do, every day we keep it for longer, we're not buying another car which uses all that energy to produce. And here's a real kicker. And I think this is another issue and that is E EVs are terribly expensive. A lot of people said to me, you can't really buy an EV for less than 50,000 pounds, euros, dollars. Well, that's just not true. As humans, we need to clean up our act. We need to stop burning stuff and get off fossil fuels. And governments are going to have to help that transition. 
here in France, they gave us a grant of the price of the car and it made it just about affordable. The real sweetener was they took the old diesel and scrapped it and gave us money for that, more money than it was worth. So, I mean, it, it just clinched the deal. But I think if you just are buying a car and hoping to sell it in five years time for more money, forget it. I mean, I think they are gonna lose money. But you can't believe how much money potentially an EV could save you. No fuel cost, no road fund tax, no congestion charge. You can drive in some cities that ban uh, ICE, internal combustion engine cars. It's just a win-win situation. So here's my closing thoughts. First of all, we really like the Zoe. It's different, you have to think different. Um, it's incredibly easy and nice to drive. It doesn't produce any emissions. Um, it's easy to charge, it's got a long range, it's comfortable, it's quiet, uh, it's, the cabin air is beautiful. I would just go out and buy an EV, I think, not only to save the planet, but to save you a lot of money, and just because they're good modern vehicles. The truth is out there.